Do you want to play with blocks? No. Do you want to sing a song? No. Do you want to play dress up? No. Come on, let's play the story of the little red hen. Please, we'll make a perfect cat. Please, please. Okay. Yummy. Let's eat. You didn't help me plant the grains. You didn't help me harvest the wheat. You didn't help me carry, grind, or bake. But now you want to eat? Meow. I did all the work myself, and now I will eat myself. So the little red hen ate, for she was hungry from her hard work. Cat helped her friend plant more grain, and together they baked lots more bread to share. And, and they, they both lived happily ever after. The end. Do you want to bake something else together? Sure. Let's make a cake with pumpkin in it. Pumpkin Yum. is so good in cake. This is going to be delicious. Okay. We could add some um, vegetable too to make it really healthy. Yeah, very healthy. Ready, set, go! <laughs> I got okay. this. All right, <laughs> and that goes there, and this goes there. Done, I win. I'm 
so fast, I'm like lightning. Yes. Slow down. <laughs> you know what game I think we should play next? What? The tortoise and the hare? Look, I'm sorry for bragging. Look at me, I'm so fast. Have you ever seen anyone faster than me? I don't think so. Hi, hare. Tortoise, is that you? You are so slow, I thought you were a rock. How do you think your friends feel when you say they're slow? You always brag about how fast you are. I challenge you to a race. Are you joking? We'll race around the field to the finish line. We need a finish line. On it. Just plant these in the field. Now we're ready for the race. Come on, tortoise. On your mark, get set, go! Oh, wow, I'm fast. Hey, tortoise, did you give up yet? Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> You're so slow, I can eat all of this food and still win. Mm, looks quite delicious. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> hey, tortoise! You're so slow, I can take a nap and still win. All that food made me quite sleepy. Just one quick nap. I told you slow and steady would win the race. What? Huh? No! What? That's not fair. You might be fast but you have a lot to learn about being a good friend. Good race. You know, he never gave up. Good race, my friend. And from then on, the tortoise and the hare became very best friends. The end. We should have a contest to see who could jump the highest. How about we just jump together? Okay. One, two, Hey Mother Goose Club, I'm Jesse. Today I'm here with the Ruckus, my boys, Diego, Zion, and Kingston. Today I'm pretending to be a big bad wolf, and they're pretending to be three little pigs. So guess what story we're doing? That's right, the three little pigs. So let's get to it. Little piggy, let me in. I'll hop. And I'll puff, and I'll blow your house up! <laughs> Come here, baby. Little <laughs> ah. piggies, let me in. Stop, my hair, my chinny chin chin. Or I'll puff, and I'll puff. And I'll blow it Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not a chin chin. I'll huff. And I'll puff. And I'll blow it.
Thanks for watching. We hope you guys had a ton of fun with us today. See you next time. Bye. 18, 19, 20. Ready or not, here I come. Are you behind the costumes? No. Okay. Are you behind the bookshelf? Boom! Ah! You scared me. Sorry. Hey, do you want to play Chicken Little? Sure, as long as I get to be the fox. All right. Here you go, little guy. I'll get an acorn. Cluck, 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 just walking around the farm. I'm a big, tall tree. Walk under me. Cluck, 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 just hanging out. My acorn. Ah, my head. Wait, what hit my head? I don't know. It must have been the sky. Help, help, the sky is falling. Help. You make a great chicken. Now I'm going to be the head. No, 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 no. Help! Help! This sky is falling! Chicken Little, what's wrong? Henny Penny, Henny Penny, a piece of the sky fell and hit me on the head. And now, the rest of the sky will probably fall and smush us all. The sky is falling? The sky is falling! The sky! The sky is falling! Help, help! Now I'll be the duck. The sky is Penny, falling. Henny Penny, what in the world is going on? Oh, Ducky Lucky. The sky, the sky is falling, and it's gonna smush us all. Oh no, the sky is falling? The sky is falling. Help, help. Help, help. The sky is falling. Now I'll be the fox. No, 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 no. Help, the sky is falling. Oh, Ducky Lucky, what's the problem? Oh, Foxy Loxy, the sky is falling, and it's gonna crush us all. And you're sure why? Well, Henny Penny told me, and Chicken Little told her. And you're telling me, so it must be true. Come, we better take cover. Here, quick, come to my den. Thank you, Foxy. Yes, this feels much safer. And what about a little duck dinner? A what? Ah! Ducky Lucky ran away from the tricky fox. And Chicken Little, Henny Penny, and Ducky Lucky learn that whenever they're scared, just to take a deep breath and be calm instead. And, and they, they all lived happily ever, ever after. after. Okay, my turn to count. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen. They were wonderful rulers, fair, patient, kind, and wise. When they had a daughter, the whole kingdom rejoiced in celebration of the baby's birth. But as the princess grew into a child, it became clear that the king and queen had a problem. Their daughter would not go to sleep. Every night, when the king and queen attempted to put their daughter to bed, the princess would talk, sing, yell, and cry. She would climb out of her bed, run around her bed, or even hide under her bed. And when the princess finally fell asleep, her parents would tiptoe to their room. But as soon as they got comfortable in their own bed, they would awake to cries of, Mama! Papa! Returning to their daughter's room, they found the princess wide awake. No matter what they tried, no member of the royal family could get a good night's sleep. Now, as time went on, it became clear that the sleepless princess would be a big problem. You see, the king and queen were so tired that they were falling asleep in important meetings. And they no longer had the patience to help the townspeople with their problem. So, the king and queen announced that they would award a chest of gold to anyone who could help their daughter get a good night's sleep. The news spread, and people came from near and 
bar to help the princess get to bed. There were famous storytellers who came to tell the princess epic bedtime stories. The princess listened to every word, but she never fell asleep. Next, there were talented musicians who came to sing to the princess. They sang until the strings on their instruments snapped. Lastly, experts came with gifts of blankets and curtains and clocks, even medicine. But nothing could help the princess get to bed. It was a dark and stormy night, and the king and queen were at their wit's end when they heard a knock at the castle door. There stood a poor woman from the village. Though she worked day and night, she barely had enough money to feed her ten children. She was wet and dirty and carrying her youngest daughter, who was no older than the princess. The queen invited them in and offered them dry clothes and food. It was then that the woman explained she was there to help the princess fall asleep, as a chest of gold would feed her family for the rest of their lives. Now, the king and queen couldn't imagine that this poor woman could help their daughter get to bed, as so many people before her had failed. Yet, they led her upstairs to where they found the princess, exhausted but stubbornly bouncing on her bed. The princess climbed down from her bed and approached the young girl. Meanwhile, the woman stopped to take a look at the princess's bed, which was piled high with mattresses and blankets. With a flick of her wrist, the woman began to remove each mattress one by one. And when she got to the bottom, she stopped. The king and queen watched intently. Even the two girls turned to see what was happening. The woman bent down to pick up a small green ball. A pea, she said. No wonder the poor thing couldn't sleep. The woman threw the pea in the trash. There, she said. She'll sleep now, mark my words. The woman ushered the princess back to her bed. The young girl smiled at the princess. Here, she said, handing her her tattered old teddy bear. The princess took the bear and climbed into bed. It wasn't long before her eyes slipped closed and she was fast asleep. The princess slept all night that night and many nights afterwards. The king and queen were amazed and as promised, they gifted the woman with a chest of gold, but they also awarded her with a home in the royal palace where the two young girls became best friends and everyone lived happily and well rested ever after. That is, until the two friends discovered slumber parties. The end. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.